Okay, so with the silence, I'm going to assume um, no one has a question and that we can continue. Um, so I hope you have your text editors open. Okay, so today we're going to go through a number of things. So we are going to look at something called modules. Um, modules are just, um, they're kind of like Python files uh, that you can import, that you can bring uh, that you can import from different, different places. So importing is um, calling or um, getting a function, for example, like the, another file or a script, and then using it in a different uh, file. So these files in Python, Python in files are usually mostly uh, called modules. So we are going to look at uh, this example. Okay, so remember remember our function uh, functions uh, file. Um, we had this function. We had this function. Okay, so we had this function called uh, check um, eligibility of edge. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, want to show you how uh, we can use uh, modules in to be able to call this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uncomment this. <laughs> Please mute uh, when you join or if you're in the session. So we have um, this. Okay, so we have this uh, function called check eligibility. It's in our, uh, func in our file called functions. So what I'm going to do is in, in my code editor down there uh, in the terminal, so you can get terminal by going up um, on your menu, there's the terminal, then click on new terminal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Python. So this is how you can open the Python interactive uh, shell using by just typing Python. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this uh, file. Now we are calling it a module. Now we're going to import this module called functions. We're going to import functions, All right? So now, what happens is when I call, when I import this uh, function, what's happening is it's it's executing everything. Um, in that um, module. So what I'm going to do is, uh, we don't need this anymore. So I'll just comment that. <laughs> now, from, from this uh, module called functions, I can execute this um, this uh, function. So what I can easily do is I can say, I can say functions, the name of the module, 
dot check um, age eligibility then the um, the bracket then I can give it an age for that so when I run that it, it will run that function and then give me the the output are we seeing that I hope you're all following, right? Okay, so I've been able to import uh, this module called functions. And from that uh, module, I've been able to call um, the check eligibility um, function. So that's how modules usually work. So the other way I can do is, um, let me exit this, and then call op, um, open the interpreter. So what I can say is, if I want to import a specific, uh, I want to import a specific, a specific um, functions, for example, this, uh, check eligibility function. I say from functions import check age eligibility eligibility like that. So I'm saying I want to import only um, one specific um, uh, function from that module. Okay, then I can call the, uh, the function of this. I can use the function and then pass its uh, value, then it will execute. So this um, module, understanding module is very important, uh, module is very important because um, in our programming, most of the cases we won't be creating, uh, for example, if it's a function, if it's a class, we won't be creating them ourselves. We'll be importing or using it from uh, the different uh, libraries in, uh, in in the language or external libraries. So, for example, uh, the other, uh, for example, I can say import. So, the Python programming language uh, comes with a number of modules inbuilt. So, for example, I can import OS, right? So, OS is a module within the Python programming language. So, the OS or module. What it does, it gives you functions, um, classes uh, uh, that you can apply to um, in regards to the operating system, right? So within the operating system, you can use uh, the OS module to, to, for example, get the path to a file, maybe create a directory. So those, those are the things that you will look on uh, later, but it's very, very important to understand uh, what the, the concept of modules is all about. So for example, I can say OS dot, I want to get the directory. Then when I, when I run that, if you print for me where yeah, I am exactly in the um, in the operating system. Awesome. So that's how uh, modules work, and we're going to use them um, a lot um, in in our programming. Um, any question?
Awesome. So the next thing we want to look at is classes. Um, classes in programming usually just uh, provide a means for bundling data and functionality together. Um, so we create uh, classes using a method, uh, they call it classes association. We're going to look at that. Um, classes are very, um, are very important, um, mostly when you're doing object-oriented programming. And uh, we're going to look at if you're using a framework, it provides you classes. So you need to be able to know what is a class and how uh, classes work. And classes are usually uh, mostly, of, for example, objects uh, with the same uh, properties uh, that can you can apply the same uh, mode uh, methods on them. So it's like in the in the real world where there are different classes. So that's really the same thing. So let me create a new file. So I'll create a new file and call it classes with py. So I'm going to create a class. Um, in this case, um, I'll call the class. Uh, let's first create a class animal. So we're creating an, an object, a class object called animal. Now an animal, uh, can have different um, properties, can have different methods applied to them. So for example, I can say uh, the name of this animal is equals to um, a dog. Uh, name is equals to a dog. So this is how you create class in programming uh, in Python. You give the keyword class, the name of the class, and then a full colon, and then you can create some properties. So in this case, I can say name um, is equals to dog. So then for example, how do we create an, an, an object class? Uh, you create an object by saying, for example, uh, you can create an uh, object called, let's say, A is equals to, then you create an animal like that. So that's, you are in, creating an instance of this um, class animal. And then, for example, you can access the properties. For example, you can say A dot uh, print A dot name. So you are accessing that property of um, the object um, animal. So when we run this, it's going to print uh, for us dog. So the dog is the name property um, of the class animal. Now we can add uh, we can add uh, methods to our class. So for example, I can say, uh, uh, create a method or function called get a name. Right. So what this um, will do is I want it to print, uh, to print the, the name of the, of the dog. So let's see. So then um, in programming, um, with the programming uh, with Python, we use um, a keyword self. Uh, we use a keyword self for reference to the class. So for example, if you create a method, so you see in this area, uh, in this case, I'm getting an, uh, an error. It's telling me uh, the method has no arguments. So I want um, this method to reference um, the, uh, the, animal of, um, the animal class. So what I'll do is I'll use, introduce a keyword uh, called self. Now, then if you want to access the properties of 
um, class, you also introduce uh, use the self keyword. So it says self dot name. So we are accessing the name property of the of the class, and to reference to reference it, you need to use the self. So now, when I want to print instead of saying print dot name, I'll say print dot get the method called um, get name. So when I run that again down there, there's me that. So that's because let's try that. So that's how, uh, so I've created a, a method called get name. Um, this method is uh, is within the class and I want to print the name property of the, uh, animal, uh, the animal class. So what I do is I create an instance of that, uh, of that class, A is equals to animal. Then I say, I'll call the method get uh, name by saying A dot uh, get name. So it, since it's the get name is within uh, is a, is, it's a class method. I'll have to um, use the object, the class object of association here. Uh, we then use the dot notation. So a dot gets name, and then it will call that method within the function. Then simply it prints the name of the, of the animal. Now, this is a case, this is a case where we are creating, you are giving it the name uh, within the method, but then we want to be able to uh, create and uh, to give it the name uh, of the animal while we are creating uh, while we are creating the animal object here. So with Python, we use um, this is um, underscore, underscore uh, init method that allows us to pass um, values that then we can assign as uh, properties within uh, the class. So I'll delete that, then I'll say, um, so I'll say the method is called underscore underscore init method, right? And then this method now will also reference the, the, the class, and then you can pass it the, um, the values that you want to create uh, properties for. So for example, I want to give it the name so that when I create it, uh, for example, when, I, when I'm here, when I say, uh, a is equals to animal, then I can say in quotes, I want this animal to be a cat. So that self.name becomes a cat. So now this name uh, is now being passed as the name here. So when you create this uh, method, this uh, when you create this um, object uh, of this class animal, we are, will be running uh, automatically this uh, function is run. So then I do this and say self.name is equals to name. Or I can just say uh, self with animal, um, animal underscore name is close to the name. So now the, the self dot animal, uh, animal dot um, animal underscore name will now be the cat that we are passing. So now here we are getting an error because uh, get name, self dot name is no longer that. So I'll just call, I'll just edit that because it's now animal dot name. So now when I run this, uh, down here, it will print for me. <coughs> it will print for me the cut. So that's how you, that's how you create methods, and um, you then you can uh, you create methods. Uh, you can use the init um, method uh, to pass some values or properties that you want to give to um, to a class. Okay, so we can look at, um, so that's how, uh, that's a little bit of the introduction of uh, 
kind of object-oriented programming uh, with Python. <coughs> So I said the init uh, method is the method that's always run um, when you're creating an, an, an object of a class. So when you call, uh, when you're calling an, a class um, in, in Python programming, this method is always uh, the one that is run. So when you, when you create this object, usually in programming, there's usually an init method that's run when you create an object. Now we can actually define what, uh, what uh, happens when you're creating the object. <clears throat> so in this case, we have said that when this animal um, object is being created, uh, pass, uh, give, it a uh, give it a value, a name, that's the animal name, then take that value, then give it as a property of the, of the animal. So now this cat becomes a property of the animal, uh, then the, the property being the animal name. So, that's that's what happens when you that's why we are kind of creating this object because we want to pass it um a name uh, uh for that that will become the property um animal name so that's usually why we create that so for example that example for example is for example if i say a creature class foot now i want when this cla uh, foot class is created I want to create um, a list by default. So for example, like I say, uh, my, uh, I'll create a list called data. So remember, this is how we are creating, um, sorry, this is supposed to be in a, in a function, in the, in the image function. So when you create, when that uh, self, uh, that fruit object is being created, it will automatically create um, a list called data that is empty. Now, I want to, to be able to add um, fruits to this list called data. So I'll create a method called add to fruit. So this uh, add to fruit uh, will check uh, the fruit name. And then I want to, what I want to do is I want it to append to the self dot data. So I'll say self dot data depend not depend put name. And then for example, I can say print uh, self. So I can say f is also put. Now, when I create this, uh, the F object um, of the fruit class, automatically the, the empty data object um, will be created. So then I can say fruit dot, um, what was the name of the method? Add to fruit, fruit dot add to fruit. So then I'll say add apples. So I'll comment on this. And then uh, when I run down there, see now our data list is just made up of apples. So then what I can do again is add another fruit. Uh, then when I run that, now my data, uh, my data list has two fruits, apples and oranges. So that's basically how classes work, and that's how, um, yeah, that's how classes work. Self uh, is used to reference um, to reference the class. It's used to reference the, uh, the class uh, or the object that you are creating. So if you create any method, if you, you create any method within a class, you have to reference, uh, it's important to, it's, you have to reference to that uh, class object you're creating. That's the role of the self.
so then um, in uh, in the object uh, in object of, um, a class can inherit another class so for example I can I can create another class called um, what they call it um, so I can for example I can create another class called matunda that inherits from fruit so if you're inheriting from other class you you pass um, you pass the name of the class you're inheriting when you're creating that class class so class matunda then in brackets roots is the um, is the parent we can now call it the parent class now matunda becomes a child class because it's inheriting from uh, this other class then i can uh, within this i can also create methods so i can say and um, matunda remove so example so i say remove fruit this will be a method that removes um, a fruit from from the self dot data. So when you create when a class is inheriting from another class, it also inherits the properties, right? So for example, then I'll say which fruit do you want to remove. So fruit name. So this is the name of the fruit you want to remove. So then remember, uh, we, we talked about pop self dot uh, data from that class. You want to pop, right? You want to pop a specific um, fruit So who can remind us how we were doing, uh, we're using the pop. Who can remind us how we're using the pop? So we want to pop uh, at a specific index. So I say um, pop at index. Uh, pop is used to highlight a certain thing. So uh, who can, um, Hadija is saying pop is used to highlight certain thing. Who can remind us what the pop was all about? It's used to delete uh, something from the list, yes. So yeah, the pop is used to delete uh, something from the list. So I can just remind you here. So let's uh, I'll say I'll create some function called f. Remember we were creating um, if we have we have this list here. I can say f dot pop. Then I can say pop at index zero. Uh, what's happening? So when I say uh, f dot pop, it removes the the last object. So when I print f, it just left with um, it just left with apples, right? So pop was removing um, something from the from the list.
So when I add item, from pop, uh, let's say if you can, let's see if you can do that. Can you do that? You can't do that uh, because you can't be interpreted as string count be interpreted as an integer. So uh, who can remind me what to remove was doing? What happens when you say remove? Remove removes the object, right? So in this case, if you want to pass uh, the foot name, we use the remove. So I say self dot data remove, then it will remove that foot name. It's an underscore name, right? So now when I create um, a new object, so for example. I'll create um, a new object for Matunda. So Matunda, right? And then I'll say uh, from the Matunda, um, I want to remove um, what is it? Uh, we have we have when you create the class, we have um, apple and oranges, so we can add more. So let me add more fruits. Let's say add mangoes. Pineapple. Right. So then I can say m dot uh, remove fruit. Remove fruit. I want to remove fruit, fruit mangoes. Right. So let's add a print so that we just see the value. So we can just add a print here so that we can see the final value of that. So when I save that, and then um, I run it down here. So our class is Python. You know, our file is five hundred classes. Um, X not in this, so list dot remove. Uh, mangoes is not in list. Okay, so we're getting an error. So anyone can tell us why we're getting this error? And saying uh, value error list dot remove x x not in list. So where where did I add self? Is it here? Uh, are you saying here? Let's see. So if we add that, uh, Matunda has no attributes uh, fruit name. So if you add self dot fruit, it has to be uh, there has to be an attribute, right? But you don't have an attribute called fruit name here. So remove that. So we don't have a class. Uh, we don't have an attribute or a property uh, called fruit name. We have a property called uh, data that you can reference with self dot data. Okay. 
Okay, so what if uh, let's let's print uh, our class would sing us it's telling us the object not in class, the item not in class, in the class um, in the list. That's the error we're getting. Uh, that's uh, that where is it? That's the the X that is the fruit name we're trying to remove is not in class. So for example, so let's see what's in it's in the what is in the self data, then be able to remove it. So we can see here it's telling us uh, self data is is empty. Okay, so now um, it's empty because now it's empty because when you create uh, when you first create the m dot uh, the matunda object here in this m, it does not have the fruits, right? These fruits uh, uh, that's a mistake I made. Um, these fruits that we are adding are in the uh, are in this object f, right? So if we want to add, um, so our, um, when we create this object, our fruit starts empty, right? So that's why we're getting the empty list. So now it means now we need to be able to add uh, those fruits, or we need to be also be able to add fruits to the um, m, the matunda object in this instance. So I say m dot add, so remember, when you're inheriting uh, from a class, you can also, uh, you also get to access the methods within the parent class we inherited from. So the Matunda uh, object M can access the methods within the uh, fruit class. So I say M dot add fruit, then I'll add apples, right? Then M dot, dot add fruit, I'll add uh, oranges, I'll say pineapple. And then I can say uh, m dot add fruit. I can add mangoes, right? So now um, our inherited uh, uh, our ch our child class Matunda is able to access the add dot fruit method in the fruit class. So we can ignore this for now. We don't need this. We can close. Uh, we can do that. So now when we run, uh, when you run this file, you see, now uh, we create, um, that is our list now. Now we have removed oranges, and then this is what's left um, in our list. I know this can, this can get a little bit confusing, but uh, we need Take it slow, please. After the class, go back and just go through this video. Uh, it will get way easier. It's not that complicated. Uh, do we have a question? Uh, this inheritance is very important because uh, we're going to use a web framework and uh, from that web framework we'll be inheriting um, a number of things from the web framework. So it's very important to understand uh, classes, what, uh, what, the, uh, what is a class, how do you initialize, how do you add, how do you, how do you initialize a class, uh, then add properties um, or attributes to that class. Uh, what? How do you uh, create methods uh, to that class? How do you inherit it? And when you inherit a class, what do you get? So you have to do.
and we have questions. So I'm going to give you five minutes to absorb what we have done. We have just gone through uh, before we go to the next thing. If you have a question, a question, please ask. Okay, so Adiga is asking, uh, saying to do an overview. So what we've done is we, are, uh, we have looked at classes. Uh, we say we create a class using the class keyword, and then the name of the class, right? So that's the syntax, uh, put a full colon. No, we, you don't have to create an inheritance. Uh, you don't need to create an inheritance to be able to delete. So in my previous, in this uh, fruit, the, uh, the parent class, what I can do, you can just create, um, so for example, I can create a new method just here and say, uh, delete from root. So this is the, the name of my, of my method. Then I can say self dot, what fruit uh, do I have to delete? So I pass it as my fruit name. Then I can say uh, self dot data, which, um, Dot remove, then I can say remove, right? And then I can say from the full time to remove. So it does not have to be in an inherited, um, in an in a, the inherited class. You can do it um, from the original class. So I was just putting it in the, um, in, in the inherited class so that I can show you how, that you can access uh, properties from uh, the parent class, but it does not have to be inherited class. You can just put it here um, within the, uh, the parent class. That's a good question, uh, Hadija. Yeah. So we were doing, uh, we were, so this is the syntax of creating class. Um, then uh, within a class, you can have a number of methods. Uh, number of methods are just functions. Um, but then we said uh, methods are functions that can be applied to specific uh, objects. So in this class, in this case, if you create an animal object, uh, the animal object can access the uh, get uh, name uh, method. So now in this um, 
when you when you create uh, what's called what you usually call an instance of a class object, this this is creating. So A is an instance of a of the animal class. So when you're creating this, there's usually a method that's usually created uh, run by default uh, in it. So we as programmer can define as programmers we can define how that method uh, is executed. So I can say this is how you uh, you call that method. You create that method. And underscore underscore in it. Now in this, uh, we can pass. I want to pass it uh, the name of the animal. When I get the name of the animal, um, then uh, so I can create an. Uh, I want to give this um, animal uh, class an attribute. So an attribute is just a property. Of the of the class, so there's a property called uh, animal name. So I reference it by using the self. So self animal name. Uh, then I'll pass, uh, give it the name that we are we are passing when creating the instance of the object. In this case, it's cat. So the self dot um, the animal name property becomes cat as a string. So now I can create some uh, create the method. We create the method called get name. That just simply prints the property um, uh, animal name, right? So you reference the you say self dot animal name to reference the uh, property of the animal class. So this is how you create uh, you create an instance um, an instance of that class. So A is the instance of that um, is an instance of the animal um, class. Then you are, you, are, you want to Give it the animal, uh, the animal and name cat. So then we can use the method. Uh, we can access this method using the a dot get name. The same way we are doing with list a dot pop, a dot remove. That's how the, the remove is, is is a method of the list um, of list that uh, that can be used to to remove an item in a list. So the same way we are using we have created a method called get underscore name. That we're using to just print uh, the name, the animal name property. Okay, so then we have looked at uh, we create another class. Uh, that instead of creating a property that is a variable, a simple string variable, we have created a class uh, that has a, a property that is a list. In this case, it's the data. It's a list. In this case, it, when you first when you First, when you create the fruit object for the first time, in this case the f, uh, f is supposed to fruit. It creates automatically it, it, since you have created uh, this uh, method here. It automatically it will automatically create an empty list called data. Now we can then add uh, objects to that. Uh, we can apply an object to that um, uh, uh, instance of that class f. So in this case, we have an added fruit uh, method that takes um, up an apple and then adds that um, to the list of that, uh, to the data list. So you're using the data.append to add that uh, fruit. And in this case, our first instance, it's a string um, apple, right, apples. And then we added another an orange pineapple. So now we have uh, our data self.data now has uh, oranges, um, apples, oranges, mangoes, and pineapples, right? So then we say, well, let's create another method that allows us to delete um, a specific fruit from that list. So then we have created the, the, the method delete um, underscore fruits underscore uh, delete from the delete underscore from underscore fruit, and uh, then it takes uh, the name of the fruit that you want to, to delete, then you say self.data.remove that specific um, fruit from that list. Then we looked at inheritance. So Matunda is inheriting from the fruit class that we have uh, created up here. And you have said uh, with inheritance, um, a, a, the new uh, child class, or they call it the derived class from the fruit, is able to access the property. So in the properties, so the properties within this other class is the data property. So the Matunda is able to access that uh, property. And also it's able to access these methods, add fruit and delete fruit. 
And to prove that, we created a method called remove fruit um, within the, our, our child class, Matunda, that takes a fruit name, uh, then deletes that or removes that uh, fruit from that list. So that's what um, we have done today in regards to classes. I hope that's okay, uh, Hadidia. Anyone else with a question? So the other thing you've looked at today is modules. Um, we were using these functions uh, file as a module, and we saw that um, uh, you can open the interpreter. So, remember, but then you need to remember is that um, if you're using your own personal uh, modules, uh, when you when you want to import them, you from the um, uh, from other module or maybe from the Python interpreter. Remember, you have to open the interpreter within that. Uh, directory that has that module. So for example, uh, the functions of py module, I have to be in that folder to be able to use it uh, within the, um, the, the Python interpreter. Right, so for in this case, we look at, uh, we save from, um, we save from functions, functions is our file, the functions of py file, uh, we save from functions, imports, right, we say import this um, and this function. So we're importing that function. Right? So we're importing that function. So we, then we can say, uh, we can call that function then because it was checking the edge and then pass it a value for edge. Right? That's how we were calling, um, we were using modules uh, then calling that function check eligibility, then giving it a value. So in the same way, um, the way we are importing is the same way we can import it. Uh, we can import a, mod uh, a module from one module to another module. So for example, I'll create a new file here. I'll say, uh, I'll call it um, modules. Um, tests. So I've created a new file called modules uh, test. So what I'm going to do is I can say, you need to note that they're all in the same uh, folder, right? So then I can say from this module, uh, from this file, modules underscore uh, test of view, I can say from, can import from this other uh, file. So I can say from functions, import, um, check, even the editor will complete uh, auto complete for that. So say I'm saying from uh, from functions import check the eligibility function, and then I can say, uh, so then I can say check eligibility function, then pass it an edge, right? So then I can run this modules uh, test file, then it will execute that for me. So that's how you can import modules in other files this is important because uh, why are modules important? They're important because you might have um, a list uh, in one module, you might have a number of functions that do something specific and you do not want to rewrite them in different files, uh, in different new Python files. 
So what you can do is you can reuse them uh, you, uh, using the, the concept of modules, right? Then uh, you need to remember is um, this, in this case, this is a module that is, we have created ourselves. So we say there are modules um, that you can use that are within the library, right? Like you have looked at the OS module. And then that, um, well, when you get into web programming with Python, you're going to use uh, the Django framework. So you can see that in the Django framework, uh, we'll be able to import a number of modules uh, when you're running uh, data subject application. So, um, so um, let's look at, uh, so we're going to look at a, sta a standard library module, uh, library within um, math. So this is the math, uh, the mathematics. So Python has a, a module called math, it only contains a number of functions um, that uh, in regard to mathematics, the mathematics you know, so for example, I can say, I can say I want to get the cosine. Um, to get the cosine, so I can say, get the cosine, I can say math, right? Math dot cos, okay, right? Then I can say, get the cosine of, for example, I hope my math is, is okay. So I can, I can say X is equal to that. Then I can say print X. I hope I remember my math. So you get, it gives us the value 0. Point, you can see down there when you run it 0. 0.96051. So the cosine of that value is, uh, is that. That thing is, for example, I can get, uh, say, uh, pi, p is equals to math dot pi, right? So I want to get the value of that. So I can say, what, what is the value of pi? Uh, print p. So I'll comment this like this. And then when I run this file, it will give me um, pi is not callable. So it's not supposed to have to be like that, it's supposed to be dot py, pi. So since pi is um, is a variable, right? It's a specific variable, not a method. So we don't need to have the brackets. So method pi p. Pi, but for pi, you get the value of pi, 3.14159, the whole that, the whole of that value, right? Mm, the other things I can say, uh, so this is the math. It has a number, a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, functions. So to, to get to know what is in there, you can say math, math dot, uh, I can print the, the whole directory, D, D, I, R, then I can say the math module. So if I format this and then run this file, you'll see that it will print for me there's so many uh, items in this module, math. So there's the cosine, there's the degrees, um, there's degrees, there's the flow, there's factorial within the math module, there's the square roots, there's the sign, there's the remainder. Um, this is the pi, this is the power, this is the log, right? So Python comes with this uh, math module, right? That has this, so there's so many uh, things that you can use uh, use it for. So that's the importance of, of modules. So let me comment this. The other module is, uh, there's a module called random. So import random, right? So then I can have um, I can have a list, right? So let's say I have fruits, or let's say you want to give a specific person a prize. So you have a, uh, a list of names. So we have a list of names. So uh, this is this is string import. We have a list of names like that. So we want to pick um, a name at random, right? So we can use 
um, result. Uh, so I can say r variable r represents a random name. I can say random, right? The choice. I give it a choice, right? Random the choice. Then I pass that the list of names, right? And I can say this code is plural, so it makes sense. So I have a list called names, and I want to pick a random name from that list, right? For example, I want to give someone a prize. So I say you know, the random, uh, you from the random module, I, I'm importing the choice uh, uh, method. Then in that choice, I'm passing it in a list of names that you should pick from random. So, so for example, like if I print add uh, that's for name, so that you can print the random name that's picked. So when you run this file, if I, for the first time it will pick Wrote as a, as a random name. When you run it again, it will pick Adija. When you run it again, it will pick Mariam. Run it again. Brighton, run it again. Mariam, run it again. Let's see if I run it again. Ruth, Brighton, Ruth, Adija. So it's picking names at, at random. So that's another module or uh, within the Python programming language that we can use um, in our day-to-day -day programming. That there's another module called dead time. So import dead time. Dead time, right? And then you can from this you can get um, what's the today's date, for example. If I say now is equals to dead time. Dead time was today. And then I can print now. Save that. Run it. Uh, has no attribute today. Ah, sorry, it's supposed to be from date time import date. Yeah, so I'm importing date from the date time module, and then here I can say date it's today, so that gives me the today's date. So when I run that, it tells me today's third uh, of uh, February 2021. Right. So there's, there's, there's so much in the, um, in the, uh, within the Python language, uh, the different modules that uh, you can use uh, for a day-to-day -day programming. So that's the core concept of modules. You can have uh, modules that you create yourself, and then there are modules that you can uh, use simply from that programming language. I don't know the question. Uh, where where did you import that? Um, where did you import the debt from functions? So I imported the debt from um, debt. I imported I imported the debt from the debt time module. So uh, Python has a, a debt time module. So what's what's happening is you see for for example here when I say import random, when I import random I can import the whole module. But then I can import something specific and say from the random module import choice. So I'm just importing importing that choice method. Then I function. Then I can say choice. And then give it that um, the the value. So that's the same case. I can import the whole date time library, or I can just import that specific date, right? The the, the date module. So that's that's what's happening. So I'm importing the date from the date. Uh, time uh, module. So that is a um, that is within the that same module. I hope that's clear. Okay. Awesome.
that you create yourself and then there are modules that you can uh, use simply from that programming language. Okay. That you create yourself and then there are modules that Okay, um, do we have any question? So if there are no questions, um, we can end there for today. Uh, we have done uh, modules, you have done uh, functions, um, modules, you have done classes. Um, So please uh, take your time, uh, go through the video uh, and also go through the, uh, the, the, the official documentation, uh, the Python documentation, uh, so that you can, you can add more to what I've said, uh, I've, I've gone through, uh, because there's a whole lot of other things that you can add. But what I've done is, what I've given you, what you've gone through is um, those uh, the basics that are enough for you to do something. Uh, with the language. Awesome. So if there are no questions, uh, I would like to end there for today.